12.2 gas pressure and volume. Twelve point two gas pressure and volume. Here's where we're going to actually finally see some calculations. Okay, we're going to quickly kind of go through some of the little theory, at least some just some trivia. Um, understand that closed systems is one of the constant amounts of moles uh, of a substance, so it's not open to the uh, to the atmosphere. When dealing with gases, especially any gas that is considered a closed system, so a closed system is where a gas is contained within some kind of a container. Okay, so glasses in a uh, gases in a closed system, uh, fire extinguishers, uh, oxygen tanks, um, and, and um, just to kind of bring up uh, a couple of examples where understanding safety procedures are very vital uh, to allow us to be able to safely utilize these gases in nature. Okay, so it's very important that that uh, you um, you know um, that you do understand uh, the uh, the dangers be behind um, gases that are um, in closed systems, right? You you definitely, uh, for starters, you do not want to have a gas uh, in a container close to any kind of heating element, right? Because it can explode, okay, and becoming very dangerous. So uh, just a few things before. Um, we actually um, discuss some of the real calculations. Here we have pressure, okay, because we're going to talk about pressure. As pressure is a very important set of units uh, when dealing with gases. And pressure is defined as the physical term as a force exerted on an object per unit of surface area. Okay, so common uh, units that we're going to be using for, um, for pressure, pascal and kilopascal. So here we've got the, um, the conversion. So one kilopascal is equivalent to 1,000 pascals. So um, I don't give typically too many of these types of questions. Uh, there is one in the sample problems. There might be another one in the homework sample problems. But in terms of the test, uh, just understand that pressure is the force that's exerted based on whatever that area that it exists. Okay, um, so the larger the area, uh, the less pressure, right? Think about if you're being stepped on by a sneaker as opposed to being stepped on by a stiletto heel. Right, which one is going to exert the greatest amount of pressure? And so you can have two, the same person wearing the sneaker and then putting on the stiletto. They're going to both exert the same kind of force if they just stepped on your toe. But the one with the stiletto is going to exert the greatest amount of pressure because the force that they are exerting is going to be applied on a very tiny um, surface area. So uh, pressure of a gas is determined by the kinetic motion of its component molecules. So the molecules collide against the inside wall of an object, right? So here we've got a basketball. It could be any type of ball, uh, but I refer to it as a basketball. So inside, we've got air that's exerting pressure. So inside, we've got air molecules that are pushing to the inside of the ball. But we also have pressure being exerted from the outside of the ball okay so remember that outside around us we've got there are gases that are exerting a pressure on our bodies okay and so understand that it's not just the air that's inside the ball that's keeping the shape of the ball but also outside as well okay so each collision uh, exerts a force on the basketball's inner surface area and the collective number of collisions as well as the strength of the force uh, form the net or overall gas pressure okay so since the molecules move in all directions the net pressure exerted will be equal throughout the entire ball okay so you're going to have a net force pushing outwards from inside of the ball uh, and of course outside a smaller or a different amount of um, pressure but in terms there's going to be uh, extra air pressure found on the inside of the ball 
So uh, the col a column of air. So if, if we were to um, slot off one meter, okay, so one meter by one meter uh, uh, at sea level, okay, so a column of air. So if we had a column of air all the way around, okay, at zero degrees Celsius, we'll exert a pressure of 100 and 1,325 pascals. That's really equivalent to 101.3. And this is a very valuable pressure unit uh, to remember, as we are going to talk about later. Um, this is considered the standard temperature at pressure at zero degrees Celsius when we are at sea level. So uh, really going to try to quickly go through some of this um, uh, some of this quick theory here. Uh, Galileo, one of the earlier uh, scientists to try to look at the suction pump, uh, where he was trying to lift air, use air to lift water to the surface from about 10 meters underground. And when drawn from greater depths, the column of water would collapse before it even reached the ground level. So it never made it up that 10 meters. Okay, so Galileo concluded that the water could not be pumped higher because it had reached its limit of vacuum. Okay, but eventually come um, some time later and a scientist by the name of Torricelli continued using Galileo's work and concluded that the weight of air was pushing down on the rest of the water. So the weight of the air pushed water up the column. OK, so what we did, what we had was we had a column. OK, we had underneath we'd have water and air. OK, or would exert a pressure causing water. Oops, causing water to slowly rise in that tube. OK, so this is this was a logical conclusion since the force of gravity pulling down the gas molecules, all matter on Earth, right? So the reason why it never reached the surface is because eventually gravity takes its place to kind of push the water back down. But eventually Torricelli decided, hey, let's use something else other than water. And he eventually used something called mercury. And, pick a, and the reason why he used mercury was because mercury had a density that was 13.6 times greater than that of water. And so he created this apparatus that we now know as a barometer. So what he has here is he's got mercury in here. So there's mercury. Okay, he's got the tube now. And what's happening is the atmosphere is exerting a pressure on the mercury in this beaker. And what it's what's happening is it's forcing mercury to go up this tube. And he would measure the height in which the mercury would rise up the tube. And now we're able to get more mercury or more liquid through the tube, which Galileo was unable to do using water. So he thought, hey, let me use something that had a greater density than water. And he noticed, wow, look at this rapid, you know, uh, push up the, uh, the tube. And so he collected and he noticed that the height in which the uh, mercury rose was about 760 millimeters. Hence the reason why they refer to um, a pressure unit as 760 millimeters mercury to represent that millimeters, it was the height of the, uh, the tube uh, that the mercury had rose and that we were using mercury to determine that, um, that value. So, Torricelli, though, considered his experiment a failure because what happened was on one day he found it at 760. On another day, it was like, hey, wait a second. It just went up to 765. The day after, it was a 752. So all of a sudden, that number changed. And he was like, wait a second. It doesn't make sense. Okay. But the thing was that the height of the mercury column did not remain constant, but changed as weather and air temperature changed itself. So as that changes, so did the level of mercury on that tube. So Torricelli was not, uh, his experiment was not considered a failure. He just discovered that the atmosphere around us exerts a different pressure from day to day based on the weather outside and the air temperature changes that are also occurring.
So uh, some units of measure that we're using, okay, um, is 760 millimeters of mercury at zero degrees Celsius, okay, when we're at sea level. But in honor of Torricelli, instead of millimeters mercury, we could also use 760 tor. So 760 tor, okay, and 760 millimeters mercury are both interchangeable units. Okay, so you can either call them millimeters mercury or you can call them tor units. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about conversion um, uh, uh, later on in this uh, in this chapter. So the tor units also represent or are the millimeters mercury another set of pressure units known as atmospheres atm so one atmosphere is equivalent to 760 tor or 760 millimeters of mercury because they're all the same so here is valuable numbers and these are the numbers you're going to use if you're ever asked to convert from one set of units to another and these are all pressure units so this is what's referred to as stp the standard atmospheric pressure so they're all interchangeable remember we were talking about the 101.3 kilopascals kilopascals is the typical set of units that meteorologists will use so if you listen to the meteorologist explaining let's say tomorrow's weather what it's going to be like they will probably talk about the atmospheric pressure in kilopascals but kilopascals atmospheres tor units millimeters mercury they're all interchangeable so you're going to use this relationship to convert one unit to another okay and this is the standard uh, atmospheric pressure when we are at zero degrees celsius and typically calculations are based on that zero degrees celsius okay unless given otherwise okay so relation between pressure and volume okay as external pressure increases the gas molecules are forced closer together and therefore the volume then will decrease so if we exert a pressure on a gas right we exert a pressure we're going to cause the volume to get smaller okay um so as weather balloons rise in altitude the atmospheric pressure decreases so as you go higher and higher in altitude the air becomes um thinner and because the air is thinner that's what causes the balloon to expand itself because the pressure that's being exerted on let's say these weather balloons is not as great as it goes higher up so understand that for now Anytime we are referring to volume of a gas, we are referring to the volume of the container. So uh, the definition of the volume of a gas. So for now, we're going to treat all gases as having whatever volume the container contains. So if the container contains two liters or is a two liter container, it, it's holding two liters of gas. We, sh we transfer that two liters of gas into a five liter container. Now we technically assume the gas that we have is five liters. And, and you know that that kind of doesn't really make any sense. But for now, we're going to treat that 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 all uh, gases will have the volume based on um, their um, whatever container that they're being held in. So uh, we're coming across the very first scientist um, and their calculations that you need to know uh, for um, uh, for the practice problems and the same and the homework questions um, in the lesson. So we've got Boyle's law and Boyle's law looks at volume and pressure provided that temperature remained constant. So what he saw was this. So here we have um, a, a plunger. Okay, a plunger, we're going to push the plunger down. So we're going to adding a pressure down onto this plunger. And what are we going to do? We're going to compress the gas closer together, thus resulting in the volume decreasing. So all of a sudden here, pressure is increasing, volume is decreasing. Okay. Now, if we release the pressure and we lower the pressure, 
Okay, we drop the pressure, we, we let go of the plunger, and we allow the volume to kind of, you know, the, the gases to kind of push off and, and expand the volume, the volume will increase. When we have this kind of a relationship, we have this type of a relationship where V is inversely proportional to 1 over P. What does that mean? Don't worry about this 1 over P or V and, and the proportion. Just understand this. Okay, that as pressure goes down, volume goes up. That's the inverse proportionality. So as one goes up, the other has to go down. As one goes up, the other one will go down, as in this example. And that's what is considered Boyle's Law. So here is the equation for Boyle's Law. P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. Okay, so when we do these calculations, you'll hopefully realize that if you're comparing, right, so you, you have one, so you're going to have an initial state of pressure and a final state of pressure. When you see how that changes, you should, using that law, be able to decipher, is my answer correct? Right? Did it, in fact, follow Boyle's law? Because in this closed system, remember, we don't see temperature. Why? Because temperature is constant. So if temperature starts at 10 degrees Celsius and it ends at 10 degrees Celsius between these two states, between this initial state and final state. So if the pressure is decreased by half, the volume will double. Okay, that's the inverse, right? Because the inverse of a half is not, so, so we inverse, 1 over 2 to become 2 over 1. Okay, that's what we mean by this proportionality. As one goes up, so does, uh, sorry, as one goes up, the other goes down. How is it going to go up? Well, if one goes up by, a, by three times, it, you know, the other is going to go down by a third. Okay. So here are some sample problems. Uh, you can kind of go through um, the steps. I'm going to go uh, straight to, um, to question three. Um, we're going to go to question two just to kind of see um, how we convert the units. And then I'm going to go straight to uh, question number four uh, so you can see how Boyle's Law works. So um, here's question number two. So we've got 100 kilopascals. We want to convert it to Tor units. What you need to remember is that line where we have one atmosphere is equal to 760 Tor, right? Or 760 millimeters mercury, which is equal to um, the 101.3 kilopascals. Okay, so what we have here is we started off with our 100 kilopascals from the question. And we, we are trying to convert to Tor units. But to do that, we need to cross out this kilopascals. And to do that, we create this set of fractions. So when we do this set of fractions, I need to make sure that whatever unit will cancel out that unit has to be at the bottom. So that kilopascals. So what is the relation between kilopascal and Tor units? Well, here they are. Okay, so we're so when we're doing any of these conversions, these are the numbers that we're going to use in these so-called fractions to convert our units into whatever we're being asked to use. You're not going to be asked to, to convert um, very often, and I, I don't think I, I really ask uh, for very much. There you might see it once, let's say, um, in in an evaluation, but for the most part, keep the units. Uh, it's important that you know what these units mean when you see Tor units. That you're not just randomly changing Tor units to kilopascals um, when you're doing the calculations. And you'll see this when we talk about question number four. So here's question number four. We've got four liters of nitrogen gas. Uh, has a pressure of 200 kilopascals. The pressure now will decrease. Okay, so all of a sudden now, here's the thing. Okay, so remember this. Boyle's Law. Okay, okay. Well, actually, before we get to that, before we get to that. Um, so here are the sets of numbers. So we've got four liters. We've got 200 kilopascals. Pressure decreases to 140 kilopascals. Now the question asks, what is the final volume, right? It's asking us for this. My advice to you when it comes to these gas questions, doing this is so vital 
because you're going to be introduced to uh, three more formulas tonight, okay, uh, in the coming lessons. And with those lessons, if you do this, you can almost figure out which one of the formulas you will be using, okay? So um, if we now, we realize, hey, I've got volume, I've got pressure, okay? Um, nothing does it say about temperature changing, so we're assuming temperature remains the same. So this is Boyle's Law, and what did Boyle's Law said? Well, if pressure, as it says, it's decreasing, if pressure goes down, the answer for my volume should be greater than what I started with. So when I substitute into the into Boyle's equation, P1V1 equals P2V2, right? And then we substitute our numbers and we get a V2 that is 5.7 liters. So that 5.7 liters is greater than what we started with, which makes sense to according to Boyle's law. Okay, so we know that our calculation, we substituted correctly into the formula. So stop and think after you get the answer and go, did the laws make sense? So that, does my answer make sense to the laws, right? So if I accidentally, so here's a mistake that, that someone can make. Okay, so a student can do the following mistake. They might accidentally switch where these two are positioned in that formula. If they do that, this answer will be smaller than that, which means it's wrong, right? But a lot of times we kind of assume, oh, you know, we, I typed it into the calculator, everything's fine, it should be perfect. Stop and think, does my answer in fact make sense and does it and here yes my pressure um went down so if my pressure went down my an the answer to my volume should go up and yes it in fact did i hope you like this video if you did do not be shy to hit that thumbs up button and while you're clicking the thumbs up click on that subscribe to stay tuned to my new videos thanks for watching